Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is an Edge Lab tour. We're going to go through a quick setup of Edge Lab and a Kubernetes install and show you the whole process end to end. It only takes a couple minutes, uh, and it's easy to replicate for about $500. This is what uh, my desktop Edge Lab looks like and what I'm going to be running the demos on. And Edge Lab is a completely self-contained on-desk environment. It's really a data center on your desk. Um, it's made from four Raspberry Pis, although you could use any hardware on it because it uses the exact same software that we use in data centers to control multinational banks. So um, bring in whatever you want. Um, the Raspberry Pis are a great way to just experiment and play with real hardware, doing real work um, in, a, in a fast reset environment. And that's a lot of what we've worked to build uh, with this environment. So let me explain a couple of important things about it and show you how this works. Uh, it's important to know that Digital Rebar runs completely local. It acts as a network gateway that isolates uh, the system from your network. So you can pixie boot, you can do everything you need um, right in that environment, just like it was a real edge data center um, where the, the access is protected and controlled uh, in all the ways you would expect. So let me show you the process before we actually get into the screen clicks. Uh, here's what's going to happen. We've installed Digital Rebar on the system. When I turn on the nodes, they are going to go through a Pixie Boot process and get discovered, and we will register all those machines. When we start the K3S workflow on those machines, it will elect a leader. The leader will win, the other systems will wait, and the leader will begin the process of downloading the binaries that it requires to do the install. It will install them, generate the tokens that it needs for the rest of the cluster to join, and once those clusters are uploaded into Digital Rebar's profile, the other systems are unblocked. They will continue to do their install. And we'll actually keep going because we'll install the dashboard and some other components uh, as part of this process. But that's what a K3S looks like. And literally, it's faster in the system than it is for me to describe it. So watch carefully. We start the whole edgelab.digital journey from the edgelab.digital site where you'll find build materials, instructions, and uh, all everything you need to do to build a cluster that looks like this. This is my edgelab.digital cluster. I added some LEDs just for fun, uh, but basically this is what the cluster looks like, and you will burn SSD cards, install them in the back of the system, and then simply plug them into the network system to start the process. Now that we've built the system and have it running, uh, from the SD card, it's going to set itself up as 10.3.14.1. Uh, and I could use a serial console uh, to come in and, and make that work, or a keyboard and, and monitor, or uh, I can create a static network, I'm 10.3.14.2, and I can just attach to the system because it comes up on the same IP address every time. So I can ping 10.3.14.1, see that it's there, and then I can SSH into that box which is set, rocket skates, the digital rebar rocket skates are 0 C K E T S K A T S. And from there I now have access to the system. In this in this machine, there is on the SD card burned in, there is a start me script that is expected to take the SID of your system and the password. And from there, it's going to attach to your Wi-Fi network and make Pi Zero the gateway for the cluster. Remember, all communications in the cluster occur on the, uh, the wired network. So only the first Pi has to be attached to the uh, internet address. And so once it's done that and connected there, it sets it up as a gateway, and then it starts downloading digital rebar to do all those installs. And it's going to use the tip version of digital rebar and go through the process downloading that file and installing it. Because we are using the Digital Rebar bootstrapping automation, this is the only thing we have to do. It will literally start itself, download the content packs that do the bootstrapping, and go. And at this point, we're really just waiting for it to start Digital Rebar enough that we can uh, log in to the system using the uh, UX. The install here might take a different amount of time depending on your bandwidth course, and the pies aren't that fast, so it takes a little bit of time to get everything going. At this point, we actually have Digital Rebar running on the system, and we'll start seeing it do the provisioning operations to bootstrap. 
Um, you do not need to follow the install script instructions here because it's all been pre-baked into that start me script. So what I can do is here, if I go to HTTPS 10.3.14 and then 80.92, it's going to bring me to the Digital Rebar API port. Uh, in this case, uh, I have to accept the certificate, always the starting point, and then um, it'll bring up, it'll automatically bring up the single page React app that is the Rebar UX, and then reattach me to that uh, digital rebar endpoint. In the background over here, uh, it's doing the work it needs to bring the system up. Uh, I accept the EULA, and now I am running the cluster, Pi0 on that cluster, watching it go through the bootstrapping process while I am uh, actually able to use the APIs and, and get the system running. So once the bootstrap is completed, all of the setup is done for the system and we're ready to go for the uh, booting of the individual machines. And all I have to do for that is plug them in. So I'm going to click in my additional machines and let them go through the boot process. In that in that, while, it's, while we're waiting for that to boot, I'm going to show you a, a video of what the boot would look like if you had a terminal attached. I can show you the subnet, and this is really critical for uh, DHCP Pixie booting. In the Edge Lab subnet we've set up, we've identified the IP range. Uh, we're sending all the machines into the .100 range here, and we've specified specific Raspberry Pi settings that allow you to pixie boot the Raspberry Pis uh, through the not quite normal pixie boot process um, that, Pis, that Pis are able to use. And that will mean that as the machines come up, they're automatically going to go into an in-memory OS. And uh, that will, because of the way the pixie boot process works, identify the machines, run it through a simple registration, and make things start running. While we wait for those machines to come in, uh, what we'll do is uh, we're going to look through in the catalog. Uh, this has the full available catalog. Not everything we do is built for ARM. Uh, all the Edge Lab stuff obviously is. And you can see here's Digital Rebar and the versions. Uh, Edge Lab is by default bringing in the TIP versions of the system. So you get the very latest code. Uh, and in this case, I've actually done a slight modification to Edge Lab and brought in um, something even a little bit newer. Uh, tweak out one of my features. Um, and it, you can see I've jumped back. We already have machines booting through the process. And so these are these are the first two machines that I plugged in. And we're just waiting for that last one to show up. And it went through the full process, went to discover, and here is our infrastructure. Um, as part of doing that, we do the regular go high full inventory. We'll install the SSH keys if you've installed them. So let's take a second and actually set up our SSH keys. We could do that very easily here. Should have done that beforehand. Um, and I can pull over my other SSH keys. There's my public key. And all set. So that one step uh, in itself will allow me to now SSH into all of the machines. Um, and ideally, I'd, I would have done it even earlier in the process. So one of my machines isn't booting. I'm going to run the demo just with the two, and that'll be fine. So from here, if I pick K3S install and start it, it's going to go through the process. Um, of identifying the machines, electing one of them to be the leader, and then uh, setting up that the install process on those systems. So if I click into the profile here, I can see that 102 has become the leader. That looks quite good. So here's 102. And that means it will, in this install process, if I want to watch the live updates, you can see it's downloading K3S for the correct platform. It's building the services file, and it's going to continue going through the operations. Uh, and I'll keep getting live updates as we go through the system. If I visit this profile, this profile is where we're going to collect the credentials, 
the tokens, all the other pieces we need to actually run the cluster, which is where we're going to ultimately go. And if I jump over into files and look at K3S, you will see this is where it's stored the um, information about K3S and the ARM and saved me the download on future, future machines in the system. What you'll notice here is that in addition to um, installing K3S, we've already gotten the worker nodes going. We've also installed the dashboard automatically, and that's exactly what I want to demo for you. So here uh, in that profile, we have now collected the additional information about the cluster. So that includes the node token K3S used to register the other machines. We installed dashboard, so a dashboard token got added. And these are stored in an encrypted way. So what I want to be able to do here is take uh, my kube config file and download that. Excellent. Over here, if I go to my downloads directory, sorry, that's the um, Pi Zero. Excellent. I can now do a kube cuddle. I've already set up um, to use kube config in, in this location, so I can kube cuddle uh, and do a get nodes. Or is it nodes? No, get, get nodes. There we go. That looks excellent. And there are my two machines ready to go. If I do kubectl proxy, it'll start a proxy service for me so I can use the dashboard, which is excellent. In the dashboard, I do have a token here. Before I do that, if I click over into the parameter that's storing the dashboard token, it actually gives me the URL for that, uh, that login. So let's do that. Open that up. And here it's going to ask me to log into the Kubernetes dashboard. Excellent. What I need to do is go back. I need to get that dashboard token. It's encrypted. I have to click to decrypt it, paste it over here, and log into the Kubernetes dashboard. Set up for me automatically on my Raspberry Pi cluster. Uh, and now I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, that was literally the only steps I had to take. And it's, it's ready to rock and roll uh, as a fully functional cluster. Um, I could also do something like add open FAS if I wanted. Uh, there's the other machine that hadn't booted initially. So all I have to do to make this one work is start it on the K3S install cluster, and we will get that third machine coming in. Very exciting. Uh, and if I want, I can, um, we have a predefined profile for open FAS, and all I have to do is add that in. So here's the Helm open FAS, and if I assign it to my leader, then when I, I can just rerun this workflow. So I have to remove the workflow and restart it. It's going to go through. Um, the steps are idempotent, so it's going to skip all the other work and then start installing OpenFAS for me right there on the cluster using uh, that pattern. And so this shows you the Helm chart definition that's needed to run OpenFAS. You should clone this and tweak it. This is just meant for the very basic OpenFAS installation process. Uh, and once again, I'll show you um, actually, I'll show you in the dashboard. Uh, these We now have three nodes added into the system. Just that simple. And if I want to reset this cluster, um, I can literally delete the machines from here, remove that profile, because that has uh, information that's now no longer useful, and just power on and power off the machines. And they will be rediscovered in about 30 seconds, and I will be good to go on a whole other cluster. So that is your Raspberry Pi cluster uh, on K3S. And start to finish, I can build these clusters in about a minute once I've got the rest of the system set up. Hope this was very helpful. Uh, please check it out at edgelab.digital. Spend 500 bucks and build your own automated K3S studio.